Welcome in everyone. If you don't know who I am, I'm Super. I'm a Dead by Daylight enthusiast and I play a lot of this game. I have about 2,000 hours in a year. And I want to help take your experience from this game sucks and is so hard and so rage inducing to it's actually kind of fun and let's see what we can put together. Today I have three tips to help bring your killer experience to the next level. This is more so for my new killers out there. However, I hope you get value out of this and make sure you stick around to the second part of this because we have some really, really good tips for you. Also, shameless plug, if you guys have any questions about anything Dead by Daylight related, I'd love for you to ask me when I'm live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, let's get to the tips. All right, y'all, the first way to massively step up your killer game is extremely obvious but needs to be talked about because it comes into play later. You need to know your killer's power. The Legion has the ability to injure survivors, but in order to put them into the dying state, needs to use their M1 or their basic attack in order to do so. You have hybrid killers like the Nemesis who can down with an M1 or an M2. Yes, the tentacle forces survivors to get sick, but after using it a couple times on them, they can be downed by it. You have killers like the Plague who their power is to really injure survivors and keep them injured all game, however, also can be used to M2. You also have killers like the Huntress who uses her hatchets to injure and down survivors and also gives you the ability to M1, but the M2 is more efficient. You also have kills like the Cannibal, where their M2, the Cannibal's Chainsaw, allows them to insta down survivors and break pallets. Knowing this will help you out so much later because you can create builds around these killers, such as the Legion, that really play to their strengths. And knowing this takes your level from beginner to intermediate right off the bat if you can put a build together that enhances or plays around their ability. The next tip we're going to talk about today is learning how to build. I know this sounds really obvious as well. However, for my newer players, learning how to build is the key. The last tip we talked about was knowing your killer's power and also whether they are an M1 or an M2 killer. Let's take the Legion for example here. We have Susie. Her ability is mainly to keep survivors injured. Knowing this, we're going to try to play to our strengths. She is an M1 killer, so Jolt will allow us to give a little bit of gen regression off of her M1 ability, the ability to put survivors into the dying state. We can also pair that with Pain Resonance, Scourge Hook, because this is what we call a passive gen regression. We don't need to do anything special like kick gens in order to have a little bit of regression. This makes it so when we put a survivor on a special hook, the generator with the most progress blows, losing a little bit of progress. We have something to help Rod in chase because her power doesn't help us in chase. And then because she's really good at keeping survivors injured, if we get to the end game, Terminus makes it so any survivor that is injured or becomes injured in the end game suffers from the broken status effect, which means that they are unable to heal until the exit gates are open. This build synergizes really, really well with her power and her abilities. Obviously, we have a couple of add-ons here, but that is going to be talked about at a later time. The main focus should be your perks, and these are going to help you really control the game. Let's talk about a hybrid killer like the Nemesis really quickly, who has the ability to down survivors with his M1 and his power, his M2. I do have a bunch of different builds for different killers, which I will link in the card up top. If you guys want to check that out, I would appreciate it. And hopefully you guys can learn better builds for different killers if you want to or have a different idea of what to do. We have Call of Brian and Eruption here. These are gen regression perks that trigger when I kick a generator. The reason we want this instead of something like Jolt is because we have the ability to down survivors with our tentacle. So something like Jolt wouldn't apply there. We have saved the best for last because we can end chases quicker with our M1 if we need to, or again, we can M2 them and then deadlock for a little bit of gen slowdown. This synergizes really well with what the Nemesis is able to do. So keep that in mind. Knowing what the killer's ability is and how they down survivors is extremely important. Be to stay unpredictable. What do I mean by that? Dead by Daylight is a game of cat and mouse. The survivor is always going to be trying to get away from you, and you're always going to be trying to get the survivor. If you are too predictable, the survivor is going to know exactly what they need to do next, 
in order to get away from you. And if the survivor is too predictable, you're going to know how to get them. If you don't switch up your movement once in a while, maybe try a double back. Maybe try a quote-unquote mind game. Maybe try to make a play that you know shouldn't work, but might work only because it's going to make the survivor question what you're going to do next. Y'all, thank you so much for the love and support. I appreciate it. I hope everyone had an awesome holiday. Don't forget to like the video and follow or subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate you guys and I will see you on the next one. Good luck in the fog and I can't wait to see you out there.